Now this morning it's a bit cold in this part of the world. Mr. Frosty has been to visit, and the vegetable patch is white and glistening. There's ice on the pond. Boo-hoo, say Colin in the cup. It's too cold in this stupid pond. You know what day it is today, don't you? said Bertie. Nope, said Tim the tadpole, who has learned to say no properly yet. It's Christmas, said Bertie. Not interested, said Colin, who is a very grumpy fish, who doesn't like anything much, not even Christmas. What's Christmas? asked Tim. Everybody was used to little Tim asking stupid questions, but Prince Bertie was amazed that his friends haven't even heard about Christmas. You don't know about Christmas, aren't you? Burn Bertie, my, my, I'll show you. Let's go over to the palace. But I can't walk, said Tim. I haven't got any legs. So Tim climbed onto Bertie's back, and then Bertie hopped up the garden to the palace. Tim was a bit frightened, because he had never left the pond before. Hold on there, little Tim boomed Bertie as they left up to the window ledge. They looked through the window. Tim was amazed as he saw the Christmas tree with the light sparkling on it. And he saw all the children opening their presents and the huge feast on the table. I've never seen anything so magical, Bertie, he said. How I wish to get half Christmas down on the pond. And Bertie felt a little tear in his froggy eyes as he saw of all lovely Christmases he had enjoyed when he was a prince, opening hundreds of presents and stuffing himself with chocolate and mist pies and cake and they felt quite sick. And he remembered how in the afternoon when he had taken his nap, he would go out into the balcony of his balance and make a special Christmas speak speech to all the crowds of people who came to see him. May you all be happy this coming year, he would say, and thank you all for the stories and lovely presents you sent me for Christmas. And then Prince Saint Beatrice, who is as kind as he is beautiful, will go to the hospital and give some important toys to the poor children who are spending Christmas there. Prince Bertie had so many toys that he had really mind letting him some away. Although he probably would have minded if someone not quite so lovely as Princess Beatrice had done it. And so Bertie sat on the window ledge to remembering all the happy Christmases he had spent in the past. But then he remembered how he had been turned into the frog and how the lovely Princess Beatrice could no longer marry him. He would never spend another Christmas with Princess Beatrice now. Sniff, sniff, croak, croak, he said, because this was the saddest Christmas day he had ever spent. Just then, as Bertie was crying silently through the tears, the door of the palace opened. The noise started Bertie, and he fell from the window ledge onto the ground. Ah, oh, he croaked. Eek, yelped Tim. Oh, look! This is a frog, said Princess Beatrice, as she stepped to the pathway, and she picked him up onto her hand and carried him back to the pond. She didn't even notice little Tim, who was clinking by his tail only smile, hanging on to Bertie's big tail. But he felt very happy to be so close to the Princess Beatrice again, because he loved her very much. But he also felt a bit sad because she didn't really realize he was Prince Bertie at all, and just thought he was a frog. That's all.